Now a CBS4 News exclusive. He says he's witnessed mentally ill inmates being starved, beaten, and tortured. The inmate who some say is risking his life to expose prison horrors exclusively shares his story. It began with this letter Harold Hempstead wrote me, revealing details of a dark, and deadly night. An invitation to meet him in prison and learn about a chilling death that made headlines, toppled a prison hierarchy, but officially remains unsolved. So he goes into the shower. Yes, ma'am. And what do you begin to hear? Tell me the words that you heard. It takes about a minute for the shower to get on this full hot. Uh, so once it started getting on full hot, he started yelling, get me out of here, get me out of here, and kept kicking the door and kicking the door. And uh, he just continued to yell, it's hot, get me out of here, and kept kicking and kicking and kicking. Harold Hempstead says he's witness to screams that may shatter a code of silence he believes conceals terror, torture, perhaps even a deadly secret. He was definitely also yelling, get me out of here, it's hot, it's hot, get me out of here. They were the screams of a severely mentally ill inmate, Darren Rainey. And more than three years after his death, his body found allegedly scalded in a locked shower stall like this one. They are screams that fuel Hempstead's quest for answers. An inmate whose name some say is now synonymous with whistleblower. When I say the name Harold Hempstead, what comes to mind to you? A really courageous guy. George Mallincrott is the former prison psychotherapist to whom Hempstead reported early concerns about inmate abuse. He says he also tried to get authorities to pay attention. I'm on the outside and and I it, that doesn't even even compare to what what Harold Hempstead did on the inside because when you're facing daily threats of harm or death in some cases, and you still go forward, that is, that is courage. Now housed at the Martin Correctional Institution, serving a sentence of 165 years in connection to a rash of burglaries, Hempstead wrote to me about that night an inmate lost his life. Bring me back to a critical night in the history, perhaps, for the state of Florida, the Department of Corrections. Uh, it's on June 23rd, 2012, uh, is the night that Darren Rainey was killed in a shower. Incarcerated in the Dade Correctional Institution, in a unit for the mentally ill, where Hempstead worked as an orderly, the 50-year-old Rainey was brought to this shower stall from a different wing at the prison, a wing that had its own showers, but not like this one. Rainey passed within feet of Hempstead's cell, which was just underneath that shower. When the front door opened, I went to the door to look. He says Rainey was escorted to the shower by a corrections officer who he said had taken a handful of other inmates to this particular stall in the months before. Hempstead believes the shower was rigged to be controlled by guards from the outside, with temperatures reportedly able to reach 180 degrees. His only repetitive words were, I'm sorry, I can't take it no more, I won't do it again. Um, and he continued to restate those words. And then the kicking started slowing down. And then at 9.30, uh, I heard a, it sounded like he hit the wall and then his body fell. And then there was no more yelling. You've used the words that it, basically the shower was a torture chamber. It definitely was a torture chamber because it was used for the purposes of inflicting punishment. You have 11 working showers that they can't control the temperatures in, but the only shower that they can control the temperature in they put them in is the only shower in a blind spot. A shower out of range of video cameras, which reportedly malfunctioned, not even capturing his last steps leading to the shower stall. Isn't it true that allegedly the video somehow was corrupted at the moment of, 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 of what would have been the death? Correct. It goes all the way up to right when they're about to put him in the shower and nothing else exists. Oh, there were definitely blind spots when I worked there. And then half the time the cameras weren't even working. Hempstead wrote to the medical examiner's office along with other government and police authorities. He says he implored them to investigate, even study Rainey's feet. 
I wrote the medical examiner's office and said, well, look at the condition of his feet because I know he was barefooted because his shoes fell off. Following Rainey's death, he says one sergeant came and had the water temperature tested. The result? She said, it's 183 degrees. She says, you have to disconnect the shower. If you don't disconnect the shower, it could cost all of our jobs. All of which he says he tried to report. Rainey's family was only told he had died of a heart attack. So this just sat there for a year and a half of me writing letters and nothing being done about it until the people with the Herald decided to you know, look into it a little bit further. And they did look into it extensively. But more than three years later, there's still no official answers. What killed Darren Rainey? A Miami-Dade homicide investigation still open? And the autopsy report? Three years later, and there's no conclusion on an autopsy. Is that acceptable to you? Now, if this was anybody other than who he was, I believe that this would have came right away. If this was somebody in society, but I've pushed this to everybody that because of who he was, mainly a prisoner, he's black, he's mentally disabled, he was a Muslim. Um, in my opinion, his life is of no value to the majority of people. Uh, not everybody, but the majority of people. A life and death this witness refuses to forget. We reached out to the Florida Department of Corrections requesting an interview or response to allegations made by Hempstead and to our findings and questions. The department has declined, providing us this statement that in part reads, the death of Darren Rainey remains the subject of an open and active investigation being led by the Miami-Dade Police Department. Until the investigation has been completed, any questions should be directed to the MDPD. And we've reached out to them. They too say they cannot comment. We also reached out to the Miami-Dade Medical Examiner's Office three years in and there is no official cause of death. I'm Michelle Gillen, CBS 4 News.